looking to make some healthier habits this holiday season, make sure to check out our Moving Through Midlife community over on Facebook as we are doing a Planksgiving event where we are doing daily plank workouts. We will be doing an advent for healthy, happy hips this holiday season, and then also have a sugar challenge, a two-week sugar challenge that you might be interested in. Happy holidays! Welcome to Raising Healthy Humans, a podcast created for busy moms, where you can easily find info on health and wellness for your family. Join Courtney, a health coach, movement and posture specialist, and founder of FormFit, an active and supportive community where she helps busy moms move more. Here on Raising Healthy Humans podcast, she shares personal life experiences, training, knowledge, and conversations with other health and wellness experts so you can raise healthy humans. Today, I am having Lenora on to speak with us. She is with DTB Horizons, and she's actually been on twice before, but it was at the end of the conversation, uh, episode 86, Pause and Pivot, where she mentioned that she works through hypnosis with people on helping them heal from anxiety, pain, and trauma that made me want to have her on again to speak further into this. In April, we were touching on anxiety and I wanted to make sure that she was able to come on and speak with us on tips to help us through this. Uh, If any of you deal with trauma or pain, she can work with you. And this is not hypnosis like you might think of it. So she dives deeper into that as well to kind of explain how she can help you, even online, work through these past traumas and events that may be creating anxiety and pain in your life. Hello, how are you today? I am fantastic. How are you, Miss Courtney? I am great. I'm excited to have you here. You are um, this is your third time. I know. Speaking. But the second time you spoke, I was, I, you spoke about trauma mm-hmm. and pain and healing. And I was, I had to have you back on because this is something I'm very passionate about. Um, because I work with women, um, with, in regards to pain and, I have noticed there have been some moms that I've worked with that just continue to deal with pain. And I, I feel like it's something that I can't help with. There's something more that I'm not able to help them with. And um, when you mentioned that you help women heal from pain um, through trauma healing, I mm-hmm. figured I have to have you on to speak into that a little bit more. And then also we're talking about anxiety this month. So any information that you have, because I know, I mean, that type of stuff, trauma, pain, stress, anxiety, um, they kind of all go together. Absolutely. Absolutely. I completely agree with that. So my, my background is as a speech pathologist and how I came to this experience was I was going through a very painful experience in my life. I was having a very difficult time with food and it had gotten out of control over a number of years of my life. And I was doing so much to try and help myself. And I personally love the self-help community, the personal growth community, and I'm working to rebrand it to help yourself. I think it should be a smorgasbord. Everybody should feel really welcome to come and enjoy and explore and to find ways to truly help ourselves, to help ourselves become and to be the people that we want to show up as in this world. So as I was going through my experience of an eating disorder and dealing with anxiety and putting on a very happy face to cover it because I wouldn't share it with anybody. I was getting to the point where it was very apparent. I couldn't do it alone. And I was getting my second false tooth drilled into my head. And I thought you're going to need to start calling in some more assistance, Sonora. It, It wasn't that I was stupid of which I had a thought process of from very early on in my life that I was stupid. And I had come to the conclusion of there's something I don't know. I need to, I need to find other people who can help me figure out what's going on. 
So I started to reach out to professionals and one in particular, I had found them on YouTube and I just loved their work. They were, were doing so much profound work online and I could not piece it together. So as I started to reach out to that professional on how to help myself, they were able to show me the things that I did not know. And one of them that I had learned was I learned hypnosis and neurolinguistics. And also one in particular was called holographic memory resolution. And so now I have a certification as a holographic certified holographic memory resolution practitioner. So what exactly is that? Yeah, I was going to say completely. It is emotionally reframing the event that occurred. So our mind and body are connected. Our culture would have you think your mind is over here and your body's over here and doesn't make sense together. But no, everything that we experience, we experience through our mind and our body and they're connected. So when events happen over time, whether it's that you grew up with a narcissist and there was a lot of shaming and a lot of guilting going on, whether you grew up in a very loud environment where there was ongoing fighting, whether you didn't receive the attention that you wanted and needed as you were growing up, our body records the events that we experience and then they start to show up and they can start to show up as anxiety in our body. They can start to show up as in my case, an eating disorder. They can start to show up as cutting. They can start to show up as excessive crying at night and you don't know why or sleep issues and you don't know why, or you get to the end of your day and other things are going on. And in our very busy world, you could think, oh, I'm just stressed at work or I've, I've had too, ca- too much caffeine Could be the case, but there might also be something else. And when we can't get to the root of something, it really continues on because what is happening in the system is it's going, I need attention. Can you please work on this? We need to resolve this. Something is happening. And that is how I came to learn the things that I learned and how I came to the point of truly feeling I needed to change my career because I was helping people communicate externally. And now I help people communicate on the inside because something is going on and it's causing great stress. And it was such an intrinsic desire to help people to, to help them feel better because I knew how bad I felt that that's why I went and I got certifications and hours and years and how I came to here 10 years later (laughs) and plus years later, actually. So with that, because when you think of trauma, um, you think that it's got to be something severe. Mm-hmm. But I'm guessing based on what you're saying, it may not even be something so severe mm-hmm. that you're Absolutely. dealing with. So it can be even just minor little things that are occurring in the household or how you even perceive things are occurring in the household. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So trauma, our definition of trauma is often we think of car crashes or sexual molestation and being at war and we should, that is absolutely traumatic, but Mm -hmm. trauma can also be anything that your nervous system perceives as life-threatening. And that could be being left alone for a period of time when you're young, getting your toy taken away and not understanding why being told that you're bad and hearing it on repeat And really internalizing it and then having these ongoing thoughts and these ongoing feelings that you're not good enough or that you're not worthy, you're not deserving, or it's never enough. And it could really manifest into so many different things in our life, one of which being anxiety. And what it truly is, is when we start to feel that tension, when we start to feel however anxiety feels for us, it's an alarm just like we have alerts on our dashboard in the car, just like we have alarms in our house. It's an alarm that something is going on and it needs to be resolved or it needs to be tended to. Okay. And um, I'm thinking of my own household. I dealt (laughs) with a lot of anxiety. My son deals with a lot of anxiety. Um, And I'm thinking even just the trauma of, Uh, maybe seeing things that you shouldn't have at a young age. For me, it wasn't anything going on in the home. It was more um, 
the the news world news mm-hmm. was always on at dinner time so mm-hmm. i was always listening hearing things and i know that that had an effect on me my son similarly um more of the video games and things like that that can also create this kind of trauma it doesn't even have to be something specific right mm-hmm. like i mean it can be even something like that as well where tra- you're seeing more than what your brain can handle at that time absolutely and then it'll also cause ongoing stress so once we see it then we actually so we've now seen it but then we have pictures and sounds playing in our head and now they're on repeat so it's not just that one event it's how that that event occurred how we categorized it and then how we replayed it again and again. So with, with the understanding that we have pictures and sounds in our head and that we take a recording and then we can play it back. So for example, think of what you did yesterday and you can play back the events of what you did yesterday. We have the ability to amplify the events, uh, making them much bigger and almost imagine blowing it up on a green, on a IMAX theater screen. And then also imagine shrinking it down to the size of postage stamp. So we have that ability to perceive that. And as we replay things that are uh, uh, disruptive to our nervous system, and each one of us is wired differently, some people can really handle intense situations beautifully. And they're, they have that ability. Other people are more empathetic and they, they are more sensitive and they might not have the capacity to handle it as well as the other person. So it's really very individualized. But the more we replay it in our mind and body, the more we're playing it in our mind and our body is amping it up and releasing these stress chemical responses in our body. And it goes on and on and on and it builds over time. And it's not just that our body will also, we will, when we receive information, we will experience it. We will delete it, distort it, or we will capture it in a, in a specific way. We'll categorize it. So we have an event and the body goes, ah, oh, this was a happy event. Store it where we store happy happy memories. And then you have like, if you think about all your Christmas mornings, they're all stored in the same place. And then if you think about how many times you've had a fight with, whether it's a significant other or your child or your sister, or whatever the case may be, they're stored in the same place too. And so it's not that one event, it's all of those events over time. So when you're experiencing anxiety, it's not just, this is why anxiety gets worse. It's not just that one event. It's everything that's categorized in that one event and your body is amping it up more and more and more because it doesn't know how to manage the situation. Okay. And then you answered my question for me because I was thinking like, how do some people deal with this and some people don't? Because you can have two of the same, you know, two children in a household seeing the same exact really? thing. And then the way they handle it is completely different. So completely. thank you. For knowing my question um, before I even asked it. So how do we start to work on one, maybe creating less of a, I don't want to say a response, but the first thing I think is the constant replay in our head. Like, is that kind of creating that trauma over and over again? Like, does that make it worse when we're doing that? It makes it ongoing. So it can make it worse depending on what, depending on what other things you have going on in your life at that time too. So, you know, if you think of you're, you're out on a sunny day at a picnic and you think of something that was just not that great, you're going to have a different response. But now if you're lying in bed and you already are experiencing stress from the events of the day, now you're adding that now it's adding more juice to the system and now it's coming up more and more and more stress. So it really does depend on where you are. Once you start to recognize the the things that I like to encourage my clients to do is to raise their level of awareness. What, what, if it's outside your awareness, it's outside your control. So how often are you noticing these events of anxiety? When are they occurring? How frequently are they occurring? Where are they occurring? Quite literally in your body. Sometimes people will say, um, they're, they're okay at work. And then when they get home, they have all this anxiety and then they'll wake up in the middle of the night with anxiety. And I'll ask them, okay, as you, and I will purposefully elicit and trigger them because I want to know what else is going on. 
So the last time that you were feeling this anxiety, where did you feel it in your body? And sometimes they might say, oh, well, I felt it in my chest. Great. So now we have a picture of what they're doing. Now we have a location in the body of where they store it. And I'll ask them a variety of questions as it goes on. Is it inside or outside? Is there a weight, a texture, a temperature to it? Is there anything else that you notice about it? So these questions are, are a little different. And what I'm doing as I'm doing that is I'm helping my client understand that there is a conscious and a subconscious connection. And we're bridging that. We are making that connection of where they hold it, how they hold it. When we come into this world, we understand shapes and we understand colors and textures. Language is a different component. We, we have to develop that skill, but this is the language of our nervous system, the language of color, shapes, textures. And when somebody's locating it in on their body, they're accessing how their nervous system has coded it. And it is very different and very personalized to each individual. Sometimes it may be jagged. Sometimes it may be smooth. Sometimes it may be heavy, whatever the case is on how they feel it. But that's what they're doing. They're creating that bridge of there's something here. And I'm asking them to tell me more about what they're noticing. And they're quite literally pulling up the icon as if they would be pulling it up on their laptop. Okay. Pulling up the program. And once they're doing that, they're a better able to handle the stressor because what is that doing then? As we're doing that, as we're creating that component, that connection, I'm then able to guide them. And it's kind of like asking the conscious mind to t sit down, take a cup of tea and, a cr and a, enjoy a cookie. And I'm going to work with the subconscious. So now we've sat down the 5%. We're working with the 95% that's saying, this is how I categorized it. This is where I feel it. This is how old it was when I remembered being where I was. This is how many times it's been in my life. And I will ask them a variety of questions because again, once you start communicating with the subconscious, it ha it's on a different field. It's not linear to, oh, this happened at my birthday. Maybe it's connected to my birthday. It could be I was 13 and now we're pulling up a memory from when they're three and that they never remembered because that's how the subconscious has categorized it. What we're doing is we're then maneuvering in that memory, clearing what we no longer need and communicating to the subconscious that the event is over. So if you, did you ever see the movie Ghostbusters? Yes. So in the movie Ghostbusters, they have the ghost trap and they capture the ghost trap in one trap and then they Oh, okay, well, what do we do with all these ghosts? And they store it in a place. They store it in the in the like ghost basement. And then by the end of the movie, this thing is losing control because the system's on overwhelm. That's the same thing. We store our events. We store our life experiences in our body. And if we store enough traumatic experiences, it starts to show up. And that's the alarm that is happening in the nervous system. So as that's happening, what we're then doing is we're going in and we're clearing out the ghosts. We're clearing out the memories. We're clearing out what no longer needs to be there. And sometimes it may be letting that, that memory, letting that part know it's safe. It's okay. It's survived. I've worked with a number of people that have experienced sexual abuse or have experienced shame or have experienced a variety of things. And what is happening in the nervous system is that it's still open and running. It doesn't realize the event is over. So we go and we close down the event, just like we close down the program on a computer. We close it down and letting the system know it's safe. It's okay. And as we're doing that, what I also dabble in is Chinese facial reading. And you can start to see the lines on their face shift. You can start to see their breathing change. You can start to, and as, and as, as their eyes may or may not be closed, they're telling me about what's going on in the scene. The person in the scene looks better. They're breathing differently. Now, whether we take them out of the scene or whatever the case is that we do, that's how we resolve that in holographic memory resolution. We let the nervous system know that it's safe. And that is the most important thing because they still think they're trapped in 1997 and it's over here in 2023. They don't know the event is over. That's what we do is that we help that subconscious understand. Okay. You can let it go. You can move it out of your body. 
And sometimes I also do um, the same. I, I also do non-disclosure therapy. So if they don't want to tell me what's happening or if they can't remember, that's okay. No problem. We clear it out anyway. We communicate to the subconscious. We no longer need this. We can erase this information. We can resolve it. We can clean it. We can put it out to pasture, whatever it is. And we restore and we put something better, something serving in its place. Hmm. Okay. Are you doing, when you speak about doing this, like going to the subconscious, I know that you do hypnotherapy, right? Like I do hypnosis. So there's a, a okay, slight hypnosis. twist. Okay. Yes. Okay. So is that what you're then doing to bring them into the subconscious is hypnosis? To, to a point. So people often think hypnosis is, or, or being in trance is really scary. Have you ever seen a movie? Yes. You've been in trance. You're a human. So because, <laughs> because we naturally are trance machines, we go in and out of trances all the time. Our conversation, anybody listening that's engaged in our conversation is focused on the conversation. And that's what a trance is. It's just a narrowing of focus. So it's not that they, they don't have any control over their body. It's not that they, they can't lift their fingers or walk away or, or that I would do something that they, they're not in agreement to. That's not the case at all. At all times, you have autonomy to make those changes and to, to understand that you are always the one in control. You as the, the client, the, the person, individual, not you as in Lenora. Um, so when you're doing that, especially when somebody's in trance, they'll say, I don't want you to do anything that, that I'm not comfortable with. And, and I, I follow that, but at the same time, I can't. You okay. have total control. When we have people in trance, again, as humans, we naturally go in and out of trance. If you've ever driven down the highway and missed your exit, and you have bananas, now I gotta go on a U-turn. Because you were on something else that was just a focused state. So right now, as in our conversation, you're not really thinking about the humming of your refrigerator and you're not thinking about where are my keys or, you know, all these other things that we're thinking about. It's just a narrow focus and you have total control and we are both participating. So it's a great component when they some of my clients do like to keep their eyes closed. Others like to keep their eyes open and it's truly whatever their preference is. Okay, and then. Um, I could imagine, especially for those that are dealing with trauma, asking them to go back to a traumatic situation could be very f uh, fearful for them. Mm -hmm. But I know that that's not exactly what you do. Can you explain like to help people with that fear of having to go back and relive that experience. Absolutely. So all the work that I do is online. So it's not even that I'm with anybody on a couch. So I, I zoom with every, but all of my clients. And when we go to that event, what we're actually doing is we're dropping in right before the event occurred. They don't have to relive it sometimes in EDMR or in other approaches. Then what happened? Then what happened? Then what happened? And you're, you're quite literally having to relive the event. And it's very uncomfortable for that person. What we do is, is there anything else that you want to look at here? No. Right. And we move, we quite literally draw the, the focus and the attention to what would you have liked to see happen? What do you want to happen instead? And as we're doing that, we're then re-recording something new. We're also separating from the system, the nervous system that this is okay. I am safe. I can move past this. And this is what was here instead. And it's not that we rewrite the past. It's quite literally offering resolution to your mind and body because it's really about you. We want to get that energy out or moving or resolved, whatever label you want to give it. But that energy is still thinking that it's open and running and it's not anymore. And that's the most important part is having our clients and having individuals who experience trauma understand that they are now safe. The event is over and they can move forward. And when you have that resolution and some of my clients will be teary eyed, some of my clients will, will burp or the, or they're sweating and they're like, I didn't mean to cry. And it's like, this is a very good thing because when we're doing energy work in this sense of our mind and body are experiencing something, just as when we're sad, we release tears. Just when we're, we're moving, we sweat. This is a good thing. This is your body being alive, but also 
In this case, this is your body shedding what it no longer needs. And it's just quite literally shedding. It's just coming out and it's perfectly fine. Um, and I've, I've been through this process a number of times and I still do a, a weekly or daily cleanse just to keep my energy nice and clean of what I often refer to as color breathing. And it's a way to help keep your system calm and to help neutralize it because we're constantly picking up energy from other people. We're constantly giving out energy from other people and keeping our, our mind and body healthy to the best of our ability is truly important. Just like we do physical work and we take, we have physical exercise, we have mental awareness and we want to keep our mindset nice and clear. We will also have that emotional component and we have that spiritual component in some people. It all contributes. They all go together. It's not just one or the other. Da, da, da. It all comes together. And our culture would like you to think that it's all separate, but truly it, it creates this beautiful place to live quite literally in your own mind and body so that you can move through the world the way that you want. And it's not like, oh, suddenly Lenora doesn't have problems. That's not the case at all. It's, this is how I choose to help myself show up as much as I want to in this world and to be of service as much as I want to. Okay. I'm trying to think as you're speaking about everything. So it's coming into being more present, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, But for those of us who, because I'm, I'm thinking, okay, this all sounds great. But what happens for that person who just is in that constant loop where it can be a year from now and you're going, something triggers you and it play, you play back that loop again. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that this, this will help that loop break where you won't end up playing that loop back? Or if that loop plays back, you're just, eh just have no emotion towards it? Is that what's happening? Both and not no motion. It's just more neutral. So okay. for example, um, one of my clients, they had experienced sexual abuse and she would wake up in the middle of the night, very consistently at 2 AM for years on end. And when we regressed her back, she was, that's when her system was getting woken up by her abuser at 2 AM. And so she would have a very difficult time sleeping and she really couldn't get a a good night's sleep. As we worked together to clear what she no longer need, her system was going into panic under or anxiety, understandably so, even though she lived by herself, even though this was years later, her system was not okay, quite literally her nervous system. So as we did our work together, she was able to release what she no longer needed. Her nervous system and her mind and her body and her heart were able to understand this event is over. I can't change the past, but I can move forward. And that's the most important thing is that people think, you know, if I, if I forgive them or if I forget about it, it, it's dismissing it. And we're not, we're not necessarily doing that in this case. We're just quite literally communicating that energetic component out of the body so that it can heal and that it can resolve and that it can move forward. We can't change what happened to you, but we can change how you experience the rest of your life. And that's a very good thing. That's a very empowering thing because people want to sleep. People don't want to naturally walk around with anxiety or hatred towards somebody. And again, it's not that you're forgiving that person, You're quite literally protecting yourself and letting your mind and body get that resolution that it deeply needs. Okay. And how may this show up? I mean, I I would assume for many people, if they're dealing with trauma, Mm -hmm. um, a specific trauma, like you said, sexual abuse, that's very clear. But for some people who may not be... um, having something so traumatic, Mm -hmm. are there things that you may notice that you are struggling with? Is it just this anxiety? What are, how could it show up? There is sometimes where you quite literally got, I don't know why this is happening. So I had a client reach out to me and she had said to me, you know, 
I'm, I'm trying to, she was trying to eat healthier and she was also trying to do intermittent fasting. And she goes, some days I'm fine. And she was aiming for, I think, 13, 14, 15 hours, something like that. And she goes, some days I'm fine. And other days I can't even get to six hours, like literally from the time she goes to bed to the time that she wakes up. And I had said, okay, tell me about that. And she had started to tell me about her most recent time where she was driving and she felt, she started to think thoughts and she felt a feeling come up. And as I'm, as I'm FaceTiming with her or on Zoom with her, you can start to see her go quite literally into another trance. As she's talking to me, you can see her face is getting flushed. Her breathing is changing. She's thinking about things that are causing her great stress. And as I'm, as she's talking to me about it, I'm asking her, okay, is this how it feels? Yeah. I said, great. Where do you feel it? I feel it in my neck. It's coming up. Now it's going down my back. Now it's going through my shoulder. And I started to ask her those questions, that series of questions that I asked earlier. That's how it starts to show up. If you're going throughout your day and all of a sudden you're like, okay, I need, and your breathing changes, you're, you're quite literally feeling a shift from five minutes ago. You were perfectly happy. Now something has set you off. Finding out that trigger. What was that trigger? In her case, she was thinking about her responsibilities that she had to take care of later that day. That caused her to have this response, which was go find food or which was, I need a way to soothe myself. You might go into the closet and burst into tears. You might want to get in the car and think like, I just got to get out of here. I just got to get out of here. And that's you going, you or, or any individual going into another state. When you get those really strong shifts, especially when you were just perfectly pleasant and you're, da, 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 oh, that's kind of irritated me. When you feel that intensity, that's what's, that's the alarm. Okay. You're making me feel like this might be like uh, what, uh, what many would consider as a panic attack, like just out of nowhere, they start to deal with this panic attack. And interesting. There are times when I am teaching a class and I like to always try to figure out what is happening within my own body. Is it my breathing's changed? Is it, you know, what did I eat that day? That kind of stuff. My heart will start racing. Mm -hmm. I don't know where, just start racing. And I'm wondering, is this something like, I almost feel like maybe it's something that I haven't dealt with or not dealing with now, could that be something that's occurred from the past? And it's because I could probably tell you when it started, <laughs> you know, like, it's like one of those things I didn't deal with that for years. And then all of a sudden it started. And I always think like, oh, maybe my iron's low, or maybe I don't have enough of magnesium, or maybe my breathing pattern. And, you know, maybe I'm scrunched over and I'm affecting my vagus nerve, or like, I start to try to create the what science behind mm -hmm. it. Um, but it could be more of a trauma response. It could response. be something else. It could be something else. Whether, okay. so panic attacks, you know, everybody has a slightly different definition of what their panic attack looks like. I like to call it um, in increased stress or increased overwhelm. When you notice that there's a shift and there's an uncomfortable feeling and you're like, man, there it is again. Oh my God. That's a really good thing because you have a location for it. You know where you're feeling it. And you've, and you've now said, I felt this before. All super, super helpful things because now your body is effectively running what it needs to run. It's effectively running the program. And that's a good thing, especially because people will think I'm broken. I, I can't do this. I'm, something's wrong. It's not that you're broken. It's simply that we need to upgrade the software or we need to upgrade whatever is causing you the stress. This is actually a great sign that your system is working beautifully. You might not like the result, but your system is working. And that's a really, really good thing. Okay. Knowing a lot about the parasympathetic and sympathetic state and how things are being kind of pushed into action, could it be just... Could it be your diet, your breathing patterns? Could it be all of that that's just creating this parasympathetic response, right? Absolutely. Symp parasympathetic response. It could okay. absolutely be, especially when when you're then getting into a relaxed state, when you're you're relaxed because you're more in your zone 
and you're, you're guiding people through, whether it's a yoga practice or a meditation practice, you're starting to also come into a different state. So we're having a different chemical hormonal balance. The environment is supporting it. If there's, you know, nurturing music and, and different energy around us versus like if we went to a football game, clearly a different state. Right. And if you're noticing something else is going on and you've worked on these other things and they haven't been resolved, it may be something to consider that says, let me try something else. And uh, there we go. That's smorgasbord <laughs> again, <laughs> because there are so many and, and humans were incredibly wonderful creatures and they were also incredibly complex. And if you're not getting the resolve that you want, that's okay. What else can we try? And some people it is, it may simply be, Hey, I had way too much caffeine or I need a different vitamin. And this is my body telling me I need to work on something or it needs specific attention. And I think it's, we're coming to a point in our culture of our awareness is raising, Mm -hmm. but also the stress that we are getting stimulated with is very, very different than the stress of our grandparents and even the stress of our parents. It's just another level or another layer of stress. We're moving at top speeds and we're getting alerts and notifications and calls for, from 14 different ways within five minutes. And it quite literally is very alarming to your system because your system's trying to regulate and now it's like getting pinged all the time. So these are other things that we have to be aware of that says, okay, I know how I like to feel. How can I maintain that throughout my day? And some days you might be really strong in it and other days it might've teetered a little bit and you didn't have that component that you wanted and that's okay. It's not ever going to be a hundred percent for a hundred days and you're never going to be bothered because we're not sitting on a hill somewhere. And even then that rains up there. So it's really just finding things that really work for you and how you want to maintain your level of wellness and your level of joy. Okay. One more question for you. When you had mentioned where you practice a calming practice in the morning because you want to make sure that you're clearing everything out, can you speak into that a little bit more? Like, is because again, I think, like, is that like meditation? What are you doing? Are you because that trance like state is basically like a meditation where you're really kind of just being present and not thinking about everything, right? Absolutely. So when I like to, and, and I love, um, I think it was, I don't, I don't, I don't remember off the top of my head actually. And I don't want to mess up the name if I got it all wrong, but there was one that said, you're never going to clear your mind entirely because you haven't been practicing this for 20 years and sitting on a hill somewhere and, and you have so many other things. So they've mentioned to focus on one thing. And that can draw you in to that calmer state, that meditative state that you're aiming for. Because some of the meditation things will say, clear your mind. And the monkey in your mind is like, yeah, right. <laughs> and if you just say, okay, I'm going to set the intention to focus on one thing, one thing that brings me joy or one thing that I want to draw my attention to. And you imagine yourself in a different place. And you are in a trance state because you're drawing your attention there setting the intention for when you sit down to do a breathing practice or to do a meditation or to do a stress, I think is a, um, a, a stretch sounded like stress to do a stress stretch is truly important because what you're doing is you're setting that GPS in your mind that says, I want to go this way. So when you set the intention of, I want to be in a calmer state, I'm going to allow myself to pause. And what I love to do is to allow myself permission to sit or whether it's five, 10, 15 minutes, whatever it is for yourself, allow yourself permission that everything else is going to stop. It's going to pause. Time will move at its needed pace, but you have this time just for you and give yourself permission to be here in that moment. And what I also like to do is whether it's a breathing practice or we'll go with, with breathing right now. And I'll think of what color might I be experiencing right now? What color is the most one that's showing up? Do I want to keep it? Do I want to let it go? How do I want to feel? And I'll say, okay, I want to feel, I want to feel joy. What color is joy for me today? And it might be sunshine yellow. And I will imagine sunshine yellow 
flowing around me, but also breathing it in and allowing it to maneuver through my body. So that way, as you're doing that, you're then focused on that color. You're focused on that feeling. And now as you're breathing color into your body, you're able to quite literally make this mind body connection of allowing your entire body to experience this. Mm -hmm. And as you resolve in it, you're offering that joy to your nervous system and you're offering that time and that permission and that energetic component to allow yourself to achieve a new balance of experiencing joy in that moment while you're breathing, while you're allowing time to pause just for you so that you can be here in this moment. And that's something that I, I like to do quite frequently throughout my day, especially if um, if I know that other things are coming. When we can allow, when we can set ourselves up for that experience at the beginning of the day, we quite literally will perceive the entire day differently. Mm -hmm. If you want to experience more joy or even set the intention of, I want to see more people laughing around me because that feels so good. You will then go out into the grocery store and see more people laughing because that's what you're telling your mind to focus on. If we don't tell our mind to focus on something specific, it will go back to default. Default being whatever was there before. So it's truly an art of living in the present moment, but also an art of setting the intention. What do I want to see today? How do I want to show up today? I love, there's a few things that I wanted to say because I love how you had us imagine a color because um, when many people start to meditate, myself included, we, you know, you always hear like breathe in, breathe out. And a lot of people deal with anxiety just when they have to think about breathing. Mm -hmm. So when you think about a color, that kind of changes the experience. And I was even thinking like what I try to do to get in a trance like state is just to go outside and look at the trees blowing in the breeze or something like that. But the color is something you can do anywhere, which is great. Um, and then the other thing was the default state, because there's so many people that I will see that, you know, it's that negativity where you get into that thought of like, oh, everything bad happens. And, you know, it's like, oh, another, another thing, but it's, it really is one, our default is to naturally go to the negative because it's a protective mm -hmm. mechanism. Um, but if that's where our default naturally is, then how can we not expect to continuously feel like negative things mm -hmm. are happening? So the fact that you mentioned, and I know you have mentioned this before when we've spoken previously of before you go into a situation, imagine what you want to see in that situation, because then you're changing that. Mm -hmm perception or that thought, that default, like you're mentioning. Mm -hmm. So yeah, love absolutely. Love everything. You can, you can, oh, I'm so glad you can, when you know you at your outcome, when you know what you want to see, you can make sure that you're getting to that point. So even if you go out with girlfriends and you want to have so much fun tonight, I just want to be present and have a lot of laughter. You're drawing your awareness to that. And that's a great thing. So that way you then can come to the end of the time that you had together. And you're like, oh, that was so much fun rather than, oh my God, there was so much drama. It's just helping yourself. And that is so, so important. And I love that you pointed out about the subconscious because you will go back to default. And my favorite one that I ever heard was we didn't come out of the cave and go, gee, what a great, gorgeous day. We came out of the cave going, what's going to kill me? Yeah. So we are wired to sort for the negative. So understanding that support yourself and say, okay, I know this is over here. I I would prefer to focus on this. Yeah. I love it. Awesome. All right. I don't want to keep you any longer. So let us know, um, let our listeners know how we can find you. And I happen to be noticing that you've got something specifically about anxiety right now on your website as well. So let us know Hi. about that. I do. I have my anxiety ebook on my website. You can reach me at DTB Horizons and it stands for determined to be horizons.com. And anybody who is coming from your podcast, they get a complimentary 30 minute phone call with me or a Zoom call. So if you have questions and you want to reach out to me, by all means, 
do not hesitate. And also I will be sharing um, two audio downloads with you. So they'll be in your show notes and just for you guys and enjoy. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate spending time with you. And, and I had a great time talking with you, Courtney. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to listen to our podcast. We hope you found this information valuable and can incorporate it into your family's life. Make sure to check out our show notes for all the important links available. Come join us on Facebook at Moms Raising Healthy Humans community page. Also, please check out our wide range of memberships, family monthly focus ideas, challenges, live events, and on-demand and live workouts, meal plans, and so much more. Head to formfitonline.com. And as always, keep moving. Keep moving.